right, guys. Uh, hey, I'm uh, Zavi Wildman Hall, and this is the Baby in a Straight uh, Jacket podcast. And today we have a very special guest is uh, Esteban Darfez, uh, who's a secondary black belt from Cuenca, Ecuador. And I had the pleasure of studying under him for six months while I was living in Cuenca, Ecuador. And I, I learned so much from this guy. He's such an excellent teacher. Uh, if you ever get the chance to visit Ecuador or, vi or you know, just live there, you, you have to come train with this guy. Come check out his school. It's, it's really amazing. Um, so without further ado, um, I, I want to, uh, 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 Profe Esteban, uh, can you tell the audience, for people who don't know you, who are you? Um, can you tell us about yourself and just how did you get involved with Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Well, first of all, nice to see you, Javi. It's a pleasure right. doing this uh, podcast with you. Uh, and also was a very good pleasure and uh, a, a, an awesome learning process having you here in the academy. So thank you for that, man. Uh, well, I, I started jujitsu back in 2007, 2008. I was uh, studying my engineering degree in Chile. And uh, well, my, my best friend, Andres Perez, who is now the, the head coach of, of, of our team, Coab, in Latin America. He was my, uh, my, my uh, classmate and also my very good friend of mine. And he was already uh, studying jiu-jitsu. He was a blue belt or maybe even a white belt at the time. Uh, but when, when he started, uh, you know, like inviting me to train and everything, uh, he, he, he was already a blue belt. So uh, I started training with him back in, in the, I think it was 2008. And uh, yeah, never, never stopped since, you know. <laughs> right on, right on. That, that, I don't know if I'm allowed to ask this. I remember there being some story about how uh, you guys were doing like parties or something. And that uh, it, your friend who was your teacher, this uh, uh, the blue belt, that uh, he was beating everyone. And that's why you got interested in the jujitsu. <laughs> Yeah, well, actually, we were like, uh, we, we did some kind of like a, we, we, we were into the movie Fight Club, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> and after, after classes, we would go like behind the, 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 the parking lots in, in the university <laughs> and just do like uh, Fight Club, you know, uh, I didn't know anything and he knew Jiu Jitsu and he also played rugby for a while. So he had like a good top game and tackles and stuff. So that 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 was a good way of convincing me to come 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 and learn how to not get my ass kicked. That was the first. <laughs> that was the first uh, objective, you know. <laughs> you, you know, it's funny. Uh, you're not the the first person I've heard this story where uh, you know they're like, yeah, I was just fighting with my friends, and then uh, you know I realized uh, you know I've learned jujitsu, I, I could beat people up a little bit better. Like, so <laughs> and, uh, but yeah, that, that's awesome. Um, okay, so take us from you were in, in Chile, right? Uh, your student, you, uh, if I remember correctly, you were a purple belt by the time you left. Uh, how did you go from being a purple belt in Chile to starting uh, a school in, in uh, Ecuador? Because now well, you have this. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> uh, well, when I came back to Ecuador after studying, you know. Uh, I was like 25, 26 at the time. And I, I kind of like wondered, you know, if I was going to, uh, you know, have a regular nine to five job uh, with my degree. And also I, I, I wanted to keep training jujitsu. So uh, actually the first Coab Ecuador opened in 2010. It was a very small place uh, in the, like in the, in the first uh, floor of my, my mom's uh, building in Quito. Mm -hmm. So I started giving classes to maybe three, four people, you know, some neighbors, some friends. Uh, but, you know, with four people, you can make a, you know, a decent, I can't even buy food for a week with that. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to divide my time between training, teaching and, and working like a normal, normal uh, job, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then in like 2013, I came uh, to Cuenca by, you know, life circumstances. I, I ended up here in Cuenca and opened, uh, you know, the, the, the school with the vision of uh, sharing what I learned with my teacher and uh, a few trips I took to Brazil and like the, 
the jiu-jitsu lifestyle and all the, the good things that jiu-jitsu brought to me, you know, I wanted to to share with, with other people. So, uh, yeah, you know, we started back in 2014. Uh, actually, next year, we, we, we celebrate 10 years, you know, wow. here in Cuenca. Congratulations. And... I, I checked on the website, too. I, I think you're up to uh, seven branches now, right? Like seven sucursales, su right? Uh. Seven, yeah, we have huh. seven, seven different, uh, you know, satellites of the of the main huh. academy in Ecuador, and uh, trying trying to do the same thing, you know, share share jujitsu and, uh, hmm. and and give people, you know, a, 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 an awesome thing for 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 their life, you know. Yeah, yeah, well, well, great job. <laughs> and uh, okay, so, so uh, I'm gonna shift over to more like uh just general jujitsu questions um that's just got i love to get people's opinions as i always get a different answer and uh i, I want to ask you uh so we say that uh with jujitsu that there's many questions that jujitsu answers uh but in, in your opinion if you had to pick the like the one single best aspect of, of jujitsu um what would it be about jujitsu what's the, the the what single best aspect of it I would say if I had to say one thing is the like the confidence that it gives people, you know, uh, not not just I mean obviously the the confidence of of of, of having the the tools to defend yourself, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that uh, except maybe a few cases, but the, the the fighting aspect really never gets into play in the in the day by day life, you know. Mm -hmm. But the 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 warrior mentality that I call it, you know, the, the, that, that confidence in, 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 you know, if you want something, just go for it, you know, and, yeah. and if, if, uh, if whatever happens, you know, you, you, you can still, if it doesn't work out, you just learn how to get up, shake the dust off and like, just like continue, you know? So I think that that's the, 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 the best aspect of jujitsu, obviously, uh -huh. Uh, more than a cool sport and an amazing martial art, I think is the, the that part, you know. The, yeah. The, the, the mental aspect, the confidence, and the and the changes that it brings to to the people, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um. Okay, so follow up question. Uh, also, so if we say that martial arts is an expression of oneself, um, how would you describe your style of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and how does it reflect you as a person? Yeah, that's a good question. You know, uh, I, I always say that to the students, you know, that like the personality uh, reveals itself through your jujitsu. So, you know, I'm more, I'm more of a calm guy. You know, I don't get mad easily. I try to take it things like uh, to try, try to like, you know, flow with whatever happens. And and I think my, my style of jujitsu is, is like that. Uh, but but yeah, you know, it's changed over time. You know, I think it, that's the cool thing. You know, we have in, in blue belt, you might have one certain game and then in maybe a uh, brown belt, you have another different game. And in black belt, you have all a lot of time to keep evolving and changing, you know. But uh, but I think like the the fundamental aspect and the roots of, of, of your jiu-jitsu is, is based ma mainly on your, on your character, you know, your personality. So I would say I would describe my jiu-jitsu like that, you know, like very calm, you know, easy going. <laughs> yeah. I, I, would, I would agree. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, OK, so next question, then. Um, what position do you think is the most valuable to train? If you had to pick one position. I, I, I think I would pick the, the close guard. Yeah, the close guard, uh, yeah. because it's a it's a position that, you know, if, 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 for example, we, we have a, a, a pretty uh, aggressive uh, program with women, you know, uh, sharing jiu-jitsu with, with women, girls. And in that aspect, I think that if a larger person attacks you, it's, it's probable that you're going to get up in, in, in the floor and the person on top. And I think if you know that, especially the close guard for self-defense, you know, because you can close the person in and, and, and avoid punches. And from there, you have many attacks and sweeps. So I, I think it's, it's a lot uh, easier, you know, to teach a guard instead of like some wrestling move. You know, you want to teach a new guy a double leg. It's going to be pretty, pretty hard. You know, I'm not saying that the guard is easy, but I, I think it's, it's, it's more uh, 
how do you call it? It's, it's more feasible for people to, mm. to learn that aspect, you know, mm. and especially uh, considering that we, we, we have a, a big focus on, on self-defense here in the academy. As, as you know, right, mm. we always try to try to share like the, 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 the basic self-defense moves for, for people. Uh, so, so, yeah, I would say like the close guard and, and from then, obviously work it up, you know, yeah. uh, but if I to teach one thing, you know, would be like close guard, how to get away, how to get up and, and uh, avoid okay. whatever attack or, or something. Yeah. Oh, cool. Cool. Okay. So kind of uh, with that question, a follow-up question be, um, what is the most underrated or underutilized position that people should train and use more that maybe they don't? Uh, maybe the defensive part, mm. you know, many people like to attack and attack and submit, especially when, I don't know, you're blue belt or maybe like purple belt and start submitting everybody. I think that's the, the thing that, that attracts people, you know, but mm. I, I've seen many advanced students that uh, completely neglect like their, their, uh, their defensive part. You know, working how to get out, out under from mount or side control or north south position. You know, I think that that would uh, that's the most underrated part. Mm -hmm. You know. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. So, um, you, you have a very unique experience that I think it makes you very well qualified for, especially for self defense, all that. And uh, yeah, you had five MMA fights. Um, so I was wondering if you, you could just tell us about your five MMA fights, what they were like, um, like, what did you learn from them? And, uh, and like, how did it change your understand, understanding of jiu-jitsu afterwards? Okay, so, well, actually it was three MMA fights. Okay, oh, my bad. Three, yeah, <laughs> three. Uh, I lost, I lost one and I mm -hmm. won two. Okay. Uh, but, you know, it never really was to make a career of MMA. Yeah. You know, for for many reasons, but uh, the, the the main reason I got into MMA was to like prove to my students that what we do here every day uh, works. You know, yeah. and that basically you can you can win a fight without hurting the other person. You know, mm -hmm. that I think that like as a as a philosophical expression that that is the most amazing thing. You know, that yeah. in in a violent situation you can actually. Uh, you know, win, win a fight and not even like throwing one punch. And in, in my first fight, uh, I, 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 yeah, I had the a good training camp, you know, and, and the, the game plan went as, 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 as the, the, the perfect game plan, you know, the, I was fighting a, a boxer and he, the first jab he threw me, I, I was able to change my levels, take him down and then mount it. And then I, I, I threw, you know, a few, a few palm strikes just to make him turn around, give him, mm -hmm. the, give me uh, my neck, uh, his neck, sorry, and just finish a rear naked choke, you know. Uh, so, so, yeah, it, it was a cool experience. Then I had my second fight. I lost by a technical knockout, I, uh, a, low kill, a, a low kick that blew out my knee, so I couldn't continue. And the third fight was kind of the same, you know, uh, Actually, the third fight was 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 kind of crazy because I worked a lot of wrestling for that fight, mm -hmm. but I ended up pulling guard, you know, in MMA. Oh. <laughs> I just clinch, I clinch with the guy, and then I I just uh, bring brought him down to the floor and just attack an armbar, and and that was it. But you know, the overall experience of MMA for for me was like understanding the. And, and and reviewing the fundamentals of jiu-jitsu you know like the you know like good control good mount position don't let don't lose positions uh always look for for the back or the mount or the dominance you know and and all all this while avoiding strikes so uh obviously all of that was uh a, a big part of the of the self-defense program that we have now in the academy you know so uh I think that was the, the the most important thing. It was that it made me a a, a more complete fighter, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and do you feel like having done the MMA, maybe certain positions became 
I don't know, it, you, you'd be less likely to use, for, for instance, maybe like an open guard or something like that. Uh, I, I, I don't think so, because I, I've seen many examples of good jiu-jitsu guys doing things that you, you would say never do in MMA. Okay. For example, a, a deep half guard, you know, mm -hmm. where, where your face is exposed. But I've seen really high level jiu-jitsu guys, Ryan Hall, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, he uses a lot of deep half guard in MMA, but you know he, he he's so technical and so uh, knowledgeable with jiu-jitsu that he, he he's able to in, in, not let let the guy hit him just yeah. by using leverage and, and and tilting him. So he uses his hand to post instead of hitting. So I think uh, uh, if if I think any anything, anything if 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 it's well worked, you know. Uh, can 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 be a you know a good tool for for MMA. Obviously, some positions you know, especially uh, when we talk about kimono and the gi jiu jitsu, uh, that, that that thing is out of the question, right? Because you don't you don't have that that tool in MMA. But otherwise, I think that uh, you know, but maybe maybe some kind of like those very bolo and inverted things. Mm -hmm. You know, I would take them out, okay. but. Uh, but I think that you know, uh, many 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 uh, competitors have proved me wrong. You know, so yeah. I, I try not to mm. say this doesn't work. Okay, fair because... enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, awesome, awesome. Okay, um, okay. So kind of piggybacking on that, um, when we talk about uh, training with gi versus no gi, um, you know, what what are the benefits and drawbacks of of training which and um. You know, just generally, how do you feel about uh, the train between the two? Because there's different camps. Some people are, are really for gi. Some people say no gi. I personally think they're both very valuable. I'm, I'm sure you probably do too, but I just want uh, your thoughts on it. Yeah, I think both are, are incredible. You know, I, 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 even for the students, they kind of look at it as two different activities in the same academy. So that's a good thing, you know, for for as as a, as, a, as, as an academy uh, that that gives services, you know, it's like uh, you have the gi jiu jitsu, and then on Wednesdays that's the day we do no gi. It's a it's kind of like a halfway in the week, you know. So they come even for for the laundry of the gi. That's a good day, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so yeah, I I think the the the, the combination of both is is amazing. Uh, obviously, if you're going to compete in gi or no gi, you should. Uh, focus on that uh, uh, for for any given uh, specific, you know, like uh, if, let's say we have I have a competition next month. You know, I, I would probably uh, no. Is, is it, if it's a no gi competition, I would train the four weeks and focused on no gi. But then always try to uh, come back to the the same uh, the same pattern. You know, like gi and no gi during the week. That's uh, both are, are amazing. You know. Awesome. Awesome. Well, okay. I, this brings me to the final question I have for you today. Um, and I just want to ask you, why do you think your gym has been so successful? And then how can people find you and reach out to you for training? Um, well, I mean, th thanks a lot for, hey, for the props, you know, uh, I, I always say that everything that you do with a lot of uh, love, you know, and persistence, uh, always uh, gives fruits, you know. And as I said, we, we established the, the academy in 2014. Next year, we're going to, we, we, we have 10 years of working here in Ecuador. And uh, I think that the, the, the most important thing I would say is our, our training methodology, you know, tr trying to uh, really like adapt our students for Jiu Jitsu instead of just throwing mats and, and having people come in and kill themselves. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that man, many academies or, or you know, so-called instructors, they get their blue belt, purple belt, and they think, you know, it's just about that, you know, just putting the mats and they don't have any uh, methodology to, to teach jujitsu, you know. I think that more important than, than the techniques itself is, you know, try to... Uh, share values you know common values and 
uh, in one way or another help like people that come in the academy to to contribute in a positive way to society you know and i think like the 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 the, the added value of jiu jitsu is is the fighting system as in itself but more than that and more importantly also is the, the you know create good people for society uh from the mats outside you know i think that's that's the that, that that's that's it you know it doesn't matter how many medals you win or trophies because at the end of the day those those things you know, end up in the attic you know full of dust <laughs> yeah. but yeah you know but if you can create like people that are good with uh, with with others and respectful and humble and keep training until they're 60 70 80 years old that would be amazing you know so i think yeah. that that's that's the main objective of, of of the school and 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 i've been very uh very lucky you know to 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 find people that have the same vision you know and yeah. and you know just keep doing this until the last breath <laughs> yes awesome yeah well that that's uh that's our interview thank you so much that that was really interesting and that i really appreciate it. My, my pleasure my man harry i didn't know you're in thailand that's I, awesome <laughs> I, listen I, i'm all over the place but yeah